Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for coming back for another episode of What Else is Going On podcast. As I always say, if you are watching on YouTube, you can see this handsome face um, that is on the other side of the Zoom. But if you're not, for those of y'all that have been with me since the beginning, y'all know I've been fighting for my life to try to get this guest on. He is funny, smart, witty, one of the fairest reviewers out there that can call it like you see it. And even if you don't agree, we 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 all tussle in the comments sometimes and then we come back together as a family. Um, y'all know him. He is, I'm gonna call him the voice of this next generation of pop culture, Mr. Rodney the Voice. How are y'all doing? <laughs> Listen, yeah. Rodney, I'm gonna tell you this. So shout out to Carlos Harris because Carlos put us together. Rodney doesn't know that Carlos was helping me stalk you at BravoCon. So I was like, where is he? I don't see him. What is he on? He was like, he's got this on. And y'all, y'all know how Mia slithers when she walks. Y'all, I'm sitting minding my business in the Married to Medicine panel. Me and Ken Pyre chit-chatting it up. And then, but then watching the panel. And some said, turn to your right. And I had turned to my right. I said, I'll be right back. And I slithered on over to Rodney like me a slithers. Y'all, I was almost in his lap. I was so excited. <laughs> and the first thing he said, because he knew, I'm going to do your podcast. I'm going to do your podcast. No, you know what's so crazy? Carlos actually has a picture. I think it was a picture of you, Kim Pye, to show me what you had on. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, don't know, I don't know like what she's going to have on. And so, yeah, I want I, to... I, Eventually get in contact with you when I saw you. Yeah, I was I was so excited to see you. I think I was more excited to see you than the people on the Bravo chat. <laughs> Look, my husband sent back the praise hands. He said, <laughs> did you tell Rodney that he'd be in the bed with the <laughs> So I'm so happy to have you here. I first off want to ask you how it is going. How have you been? Um, I love your channel, clearly, but but how have you been? I've been great. I can't complain. You know, sometimes they say even when you complain, it, it, it doesn't make anything better. But I've been good. I've been good. I, okay. I, I, I'm happy. My channel is doing what it needs to do. And I'm satisfied. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like, when I found you, so a friend of mine, shout out to Stephanie from Mocha Minutes Podcast. She sent me a clip of you. Season five. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, season five happened. <laughs> And I would be watching you all day, everywhere. I went back and binged your old videos. I was with you when you were talking about painting the wall in that apartment. Like I, went and binged, <laughs> I binged all the videos. We didn't been through couches together, everything, which I like the one you have. I love it. But um, you were making sense. And I, I had to ask myself, because as a reviewer, you know, sometimes you like who you like, who you or who you connect with. But what you were saying made sense, even if it wasn't necessarily in the favor of who I gravitated towards. When I took a step back, I'd be like, uh-uh, Rodney, because if you was here, this is what I would say. Now I'd be like, oh, but he making sense. And then you have normalized changing your mind based off new information. So you don't just say something and stick to it. You will come back and say, y'all, I read your comments or I found this out. So I appreciate watching a person that's that's talking about pop culture um be able to rightly divide the word of what else is what what is going on you know i think it's important when you do watch these reality shows that you try to come in fair i think we all have our biases i do um sometimes i get caught up into who i like but then when i read the comments i think it's important to be able to step outside of yourself to say you know what <laughs> maybe she was right <laughs> you know what maybe he was right and then I'll come back and I thought, think about it. I'm like, you know what? I changed my mind. Y'all are actually right. I think some people have a problem saying that they were wrong too. <laughs> and so they will be, they will stick a stand in whatever they say. Yeah. I don't want to admit that I probably made a misstep. I probably was wrong. Now that I have new information, now that I see what you guys are saying, now that I saw it for myself, I didn't know this. This is why I'm coming back and I'm saying this. Yeah. yeah. And something else. You said, like you said, now that we have new information, but also 
I have to add in something that you do is you, like you just said, oh, I've read the comments and I see it differently. So you don't even just base it on new information. You're like, you know what? I read the comment this. Okay. Okay. I get it. I get it. I, I, I'm a person who loves to be in the comments. Me too. I really like to hear what people have to say. Like I'm what I'm nosy. <laughs> what I'm nosy. <laughs> then two, I just feel like what we do, I think that if we're gonna have people watch our videos, I think that the least that I could do is go read the comments and see what you have to say. And so I'm always in the comments. I'm always trying to read as many comments I can, as I can read. Because then again, there are going to be comments that may sway me to the other side. And then I'm like, okay. <laughs> but that's true. That's you Sometimes I do read the comments and I'm like, I don't care. I'm standing to what I said. I said what I said. And I'm not changing it. <laughs> Wait, I know that one of the family members cut up in the comments when you come on and you'll be like, so... <laughs> <laughs> one of us is about to get it let me see what they make did i make a comment <laughs> you'll be like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. don't try it don't try it but i do i really do appreciate that about you now um what because you talk you talk a lot let me go back one of the things i appreciate about your channel too is you shared some of yourself with us some of your life so it makes us feel connected to you like when you say cousin like oh i know rodney's sisters i know those are my tatum and sloan are my nieces too like you know we know them so but what was it that made you number one interested in even recapping pop culture and then deciding to you know what i'm gonna set up my camera i'm gonna get on this youtube and i'm gonna say what i think you know, it goes back. Some of the YouTubers that I used to absolutely adore and love, um, B. Scott. I don't know if you heard about B. Yeah, Scott. Oh, I, I was, listen, subscribe to the podcast, everything. <laughs> uh, I remember the Scorpion show. Yes. There was a guy named, um, he's called himself uh, Boy Dashing, I believe. Okay. I always kind of see them come down here and do that thing. And I used to feel like, Maybe I, do, maybe I do that too, you know? And then I decided one day to finally just kind of like set my camera up. And I was like, Wherever, whatever happens, happens. And I'm not going to lie. For me, it wasn't like this overnight thing. It, you know, it really took, a, it took a long time for people to kind of, um, I guess, catch on to me. I knew that I, I felt like I was a star. <laughs> I was just trying to wait for everybody else to catch on. <laughs> like once it started kind of moving I was like okay this is going in the direction that I like um and I just felt like also I think there's a space for everybody and I just wanted to get my opinion out there that's all it is that's really all. I just wanted to be heard that's it I love that and I now were you or have have you ever been at a point in this journey when because that feedback comes along with people coming feedback comes and it's it could be whether you're you're the, your jacket or you're this or you're that or your background or I don't like your uh just get to the point which to me it's like if I'm providing commentary on a story there is no just get, I'm not a newscaster so I'm not just reading you what's going on you provide commentary so was there ever a point in all of that that made you kind of question whether or not you could continue doing it or if you were had the tough skin enough to do it like Auntie Wendy because Auntie Wendy would say whatever and she would move on. We don't know if she went home and banged her head against the wall or cried because of the commentary. Yes. And it was it was season five of Potomac. I, see, I was almost like this is a mess. I don't understand what's going on. I felt like I was like in the twilight zone going back and forth in the comments section, going back and forth, like, I really, season five of Potomac, I was like, okay, maybe you need to go and dust your resume off because this YouTube <laughs> is not going to work. <laughs> because my nerves were bad. <laughs> I, that was, that was, that was one, that was probably the, the, the time that I can re remember the most where I really didn't know what direction I was going to go with YouTube. Okay. It okay. wasn't just, I've had people come after me. That doesn't really bother me because okay. they pretty much 
when, when they come after me. But it was just, I don't it was just something about season five of Real Housewives of Potomac that really left a sour taste in my mouth and I was almost wow. done. It was season five of Potomac. And see, to me, it's, that's when I found you and I felt like, oh my gosh, he's making so much sense. So that's what drew me to you, your commentary on that, and then me wanting to binge all of your other videos because I had to step outside of myself and say, okay, are you, you know, either pro Candace or pro this because of you feel like you like her or because of the situation? And there were times when you had to, I love how you say, I'm gonna have to tug everybody's wig when you had to tug on everybody's wig a little bit. Everybody got a wig chip. A wig chip, (laughs) just just a little bit, nothing too much. So it's crazy how how we how you were feeling like I don't know, and here you had so many others. Because Rodney, let me tell you something: the people was probably sick of me because I was posting your clips left and right. Boom, boom. I was in group chat. Boom, because y'all say this. Boom. <laughs> I have to go back to season five of Potomac. When season five before season five even started, I was actually like all the way team on these. Okay. <laughs> Okay. It wasn't until information started coming out where I started to say, hold up. Yes. <laughs> this is not making sense to me. And then once it started, I was like, this is not making sense. And I was literally going by what I saw on my TV screen. And I was also going by things that I saw online. And once I think everybody was kind of now, I don't want to say everybody was stuck until the way that they thought, but I just think that some people, I think the majority of people didn't want to accept that there could be, it could be what we thought it was. Yeah. And I think once I started making the videos, reviewing season five, and it just felt like, I don't know, I just, it just, I just did not like it. I didn't like season five. I thought, I felt like when I would speak, it felt like I was speaking in a different language sometimes. Yeah. And then when I saw so many people, not just on my page, but like on Twitter, um, Instagram, when I saw so many people saying the opposite of what I was saying, yeah. it made me question, maybe you are wrong because if 95% of the people are saying, <laughs> then, then maybe you are wrong. But I'm like, no, I know what I saw on my television. Like, I know what I saw. But every, I feel like everybody was over here and then it was like a handful of us over here. And I'm like, well, maybe I am wrong because why is everybody saying the same thing except for me? And then it just got to what I was like, and I was watching the episodes like four or five times. Yes. Because I was like tripping, like I have, I know I'm seeing what I see. So I will watch some episodes <laughs> four or five times before I even do a review. It was wow. Amazing. Just you would come down and I'll never forget one time you came down and you started out and you said, and you just sat there and looked at the camera. And I knew I said it's about to be a good one. Season five used to wear me out. (laughs) That's listen, I even, even in some of my friend group chats, I'm like, I don't understand how y'all are not seeing, like you said, like I'm watching, I'll never forget. There was a point when I just had to accept, okay, people are just rooting for who they like, because I remember someone saying, I- I'm just upset because they're trying to ice out Monique. And I said, you remember Ashley's dip and see when Monique literally said she just needs to be by herself, like on ice talking about Candace. And the person said, oh, yeah, I forgot. And I was like, no, y'all just don't want to see it. That, that, and that, I'm, I'm, that's a great example. It's, it's almost like you could say what you just said. Monique could have been upset that, oh, I feel like I'm being iced out. But, girl, you were going to do the same thing to your little sister. <laughs> <laughs> and then you call it out. It's like either they act like they don't know or I know that was happening. Yes, it did. <laughs> I'm telling Watching you. it. They were on their way to ice out Candace. It got reversed. And now Monique is, oh, I feel like I'm being iced out. Yeah, you were going to do the same thing to your little sister. (laughs) You know what really got me was the beginning of season five and the fact that people could literally um, watch audio being played of her admitting that basically I, I had to 
come at you on camera. And people, no ma- again, no matter who you like or dislike, for me, I was never really a fan of Monique. I liked looking at her. I felt like she was gorgeous, but it had nothing to do with Candace because I wasn't a fan of Candace in the beginning until I, I used to be like, oh, oh, I, I, I don't can't stand her until I asked myself one day, why don't you like that girl? And I said to myself, oh, because she's arguing with the people you do like. And I was like, okay, you need to go back in reverse and be like, really, was she right in those instances? So even though I didn't care for Monique, I could still call out the fact that they tried to make her responsible for the fall of the black woman after the fight and say that was unfair. So to me, I was like, well, why can't other people see? Like, we literally have audio of her admitting that she was going to set up little sis, like you said, and clearly Candace caught off guard, but we can dismiss that, which means that there was definitely plotting going on behind the scenes. I mean, <laughs> I the, my, the the cameras are off, but Monique didn't realize the mic was still on. Yep. And I, I remember reviewing that episode and I would see comments and I would just be like, what are y'all talking about? Like, we literally have the audio of Monique pretty much saying I had to. <laughs> and Candace was like, well, I didn't know if you, you know, if you want, if you didn't want Sharice, she was cursing. You know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, feel free to say whatever you want on here. This is no censorship. We don't censor over here. <laughs> No, like, you, know, you didn't want the whole act. That's the part you should have told me. You know, so, <laughs> I'm like, and then but people swore up and down that Monique was not. I'm like, they you literally have it on the episode on and, audio. Okay, this is about to be a mess. And like time after that, and the thing with Candace is this: Candace was not someone who I went up for. Um, I was one of I could take a lead, Candace. Yeah. It was when I started to defend Candace because I thought that the girl was being, the woman was being treated unfairly. I really, really, it didn't have anything to do with me necessarily liking Candace or disliking Monique because I don't have an issue with Monique either. Mm -hmm. I just felt season five, Monique was wrong and Candace was right. (laughs) That's pretty much it. (laughs) Then after that, I started to have a liking for Candace, but it wasn't about necessarily team Candace, team Monique. Yes. I started, I felt like Monique was in the right. Yeah, okay. Because I was just, in my head, based off of the Monique that I had saw on Potomac, I felt like she was kind of like, she's referred to herself like as a perfect patty. Yes. Like, nah, if, if Monique had to pop <laughs> Candace upside the head, Candace, Candace did something to Monique. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a thing that Candace asked for it. I don't care what anybody has to say. And then once I started to see how Monique was kind of trying to get ahead of the story, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> the season started, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> But it is what it is. I'll, I'll, I have to say, I will never forget when that wine glass story came out. And it came out as if, Candace, Ronnie, looking at your face. Yes, it came out as if Candace had hit Monique in the face with a wine glass. And that's why the fight started, which is interesting because if we fast forward to season eight, someone on Instagram, and I wish I had a screenshot of it so I could read it to you verbatim, but you probably saw it reminded us that before this season aired, someone had put out a story that said, Candace talks about, De- you know what I'm talking about? Candace talks about Deborah and fight starts. So it was clearly being fed to the media a certain way before the season. And that's what that whole Deborah and 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 Candace altercation this season reminded me of season five. Even, um... Was it last season when when Mia and got into the fight and Candace wasn't even in Miami at the time? Yes. And it to the media that Candace was the one who threw a wine glass and started the fight and Candace wasn't even in Miami when the fight was between Mia and Candace. Uh, what happened? Yeah, Candace said, I was in the air on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I was still on Delta Airlines. What are you- <laughs> to the beach it just I... it 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 makes honestly over here sometimes I like to talk about how reality life and real life can meet and for me honestly sometimes reading people's comments and seeing what I'm seeing 
makes me take stock of myself in real life. Like, okay, in your real life situations, make sure that you're always present, aware, <laughs> know the facts, and not one of those people that just jump in when you don't even know what's going on. I, and I feel like what happens with Potomac, I really do feel this way. I don't know, but I feel like with <laughs> A lot of people just jump in when they see the most popular comments. I really don't think a lot of people in the comments even watch the show. I think that some people probably took, started tuning in season five fight night. <laughs> and I think that once they get in the comments and depending on the, how the comments go, that's going to sway them to leave a comment. So if the yeah. comment against Candace, they'll say, oh, Candace, that's why you can beat them because your mouth is too goddamn smart. <laughs> right? <laughs> or it, it may even be Giselle. You know, they might say, oh, yeah, Janelle, you are like, it just depends on the, the the majority of the comments. And that is going that when people jump in, they just go whatever way the comments go. And I just don't think that's, I don't think that's a good thing. Yeah. Girl, you are, I, when I see people with public, and I think we all have a platform. So when I see people on Instagram, Twitter, and you, you're basically saying, yeah, Candace deserves to get her head bashed in, but you don't even know really and truly what you're even talking about you just you just see people online saying that candace has a smart mouth and she deserves to get popped <laughs> and yeah. then you want platform to say yeah she deserves to get popped and i'm like great you probably don't even watch the show <laughs> you started like you said season five start night at, at episode the fight episode <laughs> right exactly right, girl. <laughs> And then you'll have people in the comment section who'll be like, I don't even watch the show, but. Yes, yeah, I, I, but I watch the clips and don't even have the full context. How do you watch the clips and don't, and have full, con I said, and, and a lot of people are making judgments. I said, so if you were on trial for something and the judge told the prosecutor, say your part. And then when it got to your defense, they said, no, no, we got enough. You didn't even, you didn't even hear the other part. How can you make a That's judgment? Right. But one, one thing you have also said, and I think about it this way too, even in terms of Monique and how she must feel. She got off of Potomac and for all her supporters didn't even go to Love and Marriage DC. And y'all are not even calling for her. And I got this from you. Y'all have y'all are not even calling her to come back to be a part of the mix. You're wanting this black woman to come back on this show to fight another black woman when it's not even like there's any, there hasn't been any social media between them. They haven't spoken of recently in the last couple of years. And now you're calling for Monique to come back just to fight, not to add to a storyline, not to even, okay, we're going to put the GEBs in their place, but to not even to argue with your words, you're calling for her to come back to physically fight. You made a video about that. And I said, dag, when you think about it. That's the whole reason y'all want her back is to fight. I, and one day I was just sitting here thinking and I was like, that's what it is. At this point, it's not that you want Monique back on Potomac because you think she's a great housewife, that she can bring something back to the show. Every time, and I was stand in this, anytime I see the majority of the comments online, whether it's Twitter, um, Instagram, wherever, Facebook, they are wanting Monique to come back to the show because they feel like Candace needs to be popped again. And I just felt like if I was Monique and I was reading the comments and y'all are only wanting me back on the show just to be violent, not because I'm just this, this badass reality TV star and I get the girls together and I give the girls fashion and fabulosity and luxury. Want me back on the show so I can fight? Right. Like that's like that's it, and that was the majority of the comments. I hope, I hope Monique comes back and beats Candace's ass. I hope Monique's come back. That's why she got her ass whooped the last time. So you only want her back to fight. That's it. Because the truth of the matter is, if we're just gonna be honest about it, you did not follow Monique over to Love and Marriage DC, and those who followed Mar Monique over to Love and Marriage DC, they didn't even like her. Say it. So y'all only really like Monique because you hated Candace. Yeah, come on. Let's just call a thing a thing. Yeah. Once it was time for Monique to go, and I watched the first season of Love, Love and Marriage DC. Me too. The people hated Monique. They, they, ooh, I, I was shocked. It's kind of like, <laughs> you know, a bring up Portia. It's kind of like when Portia Williams from All of the Family. Once Portia got her own spin off show, at that point, they couldn't blame Kenya. 
Mm. But, oh, we have to put we have to put the accountability on the person, which is Portia. Then people started to realize that Portia might be a bit of a mess. Yes. I, Monique on Love and Marriage GC, you can't put it on Candace because Candace is not a part of the equation anymore. So now you have to look at Monique and Monique stands on her own and now y'all don't like Monique. Mm. It's just a mess. It is. Well, it's funny that you brought up Portia because I was actually going to talk about a story because we're going to, I want to uh, get into the the reunion of Potomac anyway, but I was going to bring up a story about Portia with everything going on. And I was going to say, and one of Rodney's favorite housewives, was Portia, just to get you started. <laughs> Look at y'all, y'all, Ronnie. Sorry, you know what it is about Portia. I'm just gonna be honest with the people. <laughs> I always try and give space to the housewives because yeah, I, you do. It's a reality show. It's a produced reality show. Like in real life, Kenya Moore is not bringing a marching band to somebody. <laughs> so you have to, like, in my head, I know when the girls are like putting twenty on ten. Like, okay, let me shoot this reality show. What can I do to cause a thing? Oh, I'll go get a mini marching band. Okay. And yeah. I do that in real life. Okay. <laughs> I try to give the girls space to say, you know what? Maybe they're just doing this because the cameras are up. They have to kind of turn it up a notch. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to entertain the people. But then when I look at Portia, it's like some of the things that she does, it transfers over into real life. Like you going into your coworker's home and now you're with her. Girl, uh, I need you to I need you to say it how you said, how you always say it. She what did what did she do? The lady's house and walked out with her husband and her head is safe. <laughs> you don't really know. She walked into that lady's house and walked out with her husband and her Hennessy. You know, of course, she loves Hennessy. Yes. Say, <laughs> yeah, she walked out with that man with that lady's husband in the same. And the people tried to swear up and down that oh, they're just even if they're not friends. The point of the matter is she was introducing Fallon as a friend. I don't care yes. if Fallon is screwing every man in Atlanta. That does not mean that <laughs> I get to come into your home and then screw your husband just because you screw yours. <laughs> like, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because even if Fallon was having sex with every man, the pool boy, the, the male man, that doesn't mean that that was Portia's right to come into her home and then potentially have an affair or start to sleep with. I don't know the order. Girl, you know, they lie. I don't know. And that doesn't give Portia the right to then say, oh, I'm going to potentially have a relationship with your husband because they say <laughs> you, you sleeping jack. with the assistant. Right. <laughs> with the pool boy. Somebody had to get me together about that. Uh -huh. I said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Somebody had to get me together about that. Because I was like, Fallon, she was with Jalen anyway. Because on B. Scott, they said they was in Mexico and they saw Fallon with, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, that's her husband to cheat on. <laughs> Not for Portia to come in. That's her, that's her husband if she cheating on him. No, we can give it to Fallon. <laughs> That's her husband. <laughs> they got me together. I said, mm, okay. <laughs> you right, you right. And I because I would be ready to tell some with you, Riley. Like, come on. We know we, we know that Portia be lying and she be this, but then, but now every time you say her husband and her Hannah say, now I'm saying <laughs> her husband and her Hannah say. Okay. And, then, and then to go even a step further. And y'all, we're going to get back um, to breaking down Potomac. Because for those of y'all that are not, y'all have to follow Rodney, the voice, T-H-A voice on Instagram, on Twitter. And um, wait a minute, your Twitter names. I saw I saw you put Jolie. Jolene. You know, like. <laughs> I was crying. I'm just playing. <laughs> wait. When I saw that, I was crying. I said, "I'm not for the real life, Jolene." <laughs> but y'all have got to follow Rodney. Y'all have got to watch his videos. Like I said, he's one of the creators that will make you think, be like, mm, or okay. And, and and he talks about real life stuff too, not just reality. He shared so much of himself with us. So we're gonna get back to discussing Potomac. Um, but with um. Oh, I was going to say something about Portia. See, I got uh, thrown off. But anyway, you're right. She she did not get to walk in and take out take her husband. And oh, 
I know what I was going to say when you said leads into real life consequences. So when all that stuff was going down with Atlanta, um, was it Portia's last season? And they started talking about her having scenes removed and the why. And like Kenya was reacting to something that Portia said or something that even Don Juan said um, when they had all went to lunch, but they cut all that out and only left in Kenya's reaction so then it made it seem like she wasn't supportive of the Portia supporting the Black Lives Matter movement from what I remember uh, it was something about Candy and I think Kenya and I think all of that it was supposed it was supposed to be the first episode of the season yes. and I think all of that got cut out yes. and it again make Kenya look appear, appear as if she was attacking Portia and because I think I think it was when Candy started to go to Bravo and send emails about wanting to do like those yes. specials. And I think Portia got upset because she felt like Candy was trying to use her storyline. Yes. And I think that they had a little back and forth or Don want somebody had a back and forth. Yes. And then they that out because Portia wrote an email saying that we shouldn't, this shouldn't be like, you know, up for entertainment, blah, blah, blah. But then they still kept in the part. <laughs> it shouldn't be up for entertainment, but they were okay with showing the faces of those that had been, you know, uh, their lives have been taken by police brutality and all of that. And I, what was interesting is to me, that really made me, because I'll admit I liked Portia, but I also knew mm, she isn't always innocent. And, and I felt like I had to go back and rewatch because I did blame Kenya for some stuff. Then I was like, mm, wait a minute. That, so that she was reacting, you know, what have you. But I will say what what really got me was she was saying Candy wanted to use it for her storyline, but Candy was trying to do things behind the scenes. She was having them hire black production companies. All of that. So she was trying to get black people employed on this show. Their businesses work. She wasn't trying to do that on camera. She was doing that behind the scenes. And not that the marching isn't good. It is good. But now you're talking about maybe somebody having a business, a black production company, creating generational wealth for their, you know. So I was like, Candy was trying to do that behind the scenes. How is she trying to use that for her storyline? And for Bravo to take that out, it was like, mm. And, and she didn't want them to get any credit because wasn't wasn't there a text message chain and she got upset because um, she said they were all supposed to do something together. I think Nene was. Yes. Giving, I can't remember the exact details, but it was like a text message thread. And I think it had to do with Nene. And I think that at one point, even Nene got upset at Candy. Yeah. It was it was some crazy. But I don't think I just think that Portia was using Black Lives Matter as a storyline. Period. See, I, it was so hard for me to say that. I was like, uh, no, I, mm, mm, but you know, she's marching for the, but inside it was like, this is it. for her to want that cut out because you, you want it to spotlight you and black lives matter. Yes. Taking a camera crew to film you getting arrested will bring attention, but also so would candy again trying to get employment for black folks behind the scenes as well so why couldn't it be both exactly exactly so, speaking of um this season of uh atlanta coming up i have to read you this <laughs> i know you've seen it and I, I want your opinion on this portia williams x simon demands rho a star turnover bravo contract all texts with producers about divorce. So her strange husband demanded she turn over a copy of her passport. I guess he didn't want her trying to leave. And every page in the book, along with all the text she exchanged with RHOA producers about their divorce. It looks like Simon gave her until April 4th. Shout out to April 4th, my birthday. <clears throat> Cash apps will be provided um, to produce a series of documents as part of their bitter divorce. Simon instructed his ex to turn over a copy of her passport, copies of all payments to any hotels or motels from the 2024 to now. Proof she hired an iron, an armed bodyguard, and every single contract that she signed with RHOA producers, true and true entertainment from 2022, which is when they got together, till the present. He also wants all of her text messages to producers. 
Tasha and Simon, this is going to be the storyline of season 16. <laughs> I don't even know how to take Portia and Simon. Because, well, I, <laughs> but it's, it's already a headache. Like, one of my friends, like, have you talked about Portia and Simon? Because every day it's something new with Portia and Simon. I, Portia, you wanted to get with this man. You were engaged to this man after 30 days of dating him. Is that what she's, isn't that what she said? Yes. I mean, yep. To the 30 days of dating, and now you want to get online acting as if, oh, I didn't know him. Well, of course you didn't know him because you only knew the man for 30 days before you engaged to him. Like, Through your co worker. And now it's almost like, and then you have Simon, who they say is an alleged scammer, who I just, Portia and Simon, I don't even have the words for Portia and Simon. I just don't. <laughs> and you know, I just don't know in time, but it's like I can already just I just know that season 16 of Atlanta is going to be a headache and um, that is the season playing out for us right now with them I don't want that like I don't want the season playing out right now with them I think one of the things that I like the most is when we don't hear about the storylines because then the, the surprise is gone <laughs> So when we tune in for season 16, we already kind of know what's about to happen. Do you think, let me ask you a question. Do you think that Portia knew that she was about to divorce Simon before she signed the contract to come back on? Because Andy claims that he didn't know that Portia was about to file for divorce. Do you think Portia knew and she heard it to sign the papers? I feel like one thing about a person who lies so easily is that sometimes they forget what they said and then they say something else down the road and you can come back and connect the dots. So for me, Portia talking about uh, basically if she were to say she didn't know in those text messages to Simon, to me, it made it appear as if hmm, this ain't happened in just the last month. Y'all have been going through it for a while. So you sign those divorce. So you sign those housewife papers to come back and knew that this was going to be your storyline. I don't believe she got divorced for a storyline. I believe that she had been going through it with Simon for a minute based on her text messages. The I didn't want to do this. You know why? It's like, well, that 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 just didn't happen in 30 days. So uh -huh. I believe that she signed the papers to come back to Bravo knowing that she was going to divorce him. She just hadn't yet. <laughs> right. That makes sense. <laughs> because I think about when she talked about her love story, if I'm not mistaken, it was almost like, did she, and, and I could be wrong, but I thought she said almost like a love at first sight or like she knew she loved him from the beginning. Well, the beginning is the fist bump. Did you forget that? <laughs> well, wasn't it at the door when she was at in the, the house? At the door. So to me, when a person like Portia, again, when they do tell tales so much, you can connect the one tale with another and be like, see, I tried to give you the benefit of the doubt. So that's what I think. With Portia. I do think that she knew she she was going to use a divorce. Rodney, I'm going to send you this episode back. And y'all have, for those of y'all have been with me since the beginning or recently, y'all have heard me say this. I don't know if you ever watched Below Deck, um, but you probably I watched. Know. You did? Right. Okay. I Go in and out of below there. So then you also probably watched Bravo chat room when it first came out, right? With um, Giselle, Portia, Kate. You didn't watch it? Okay. Well, you... I will watch, will watch the clips online. Okay. So you would see the clips. So there was a white woman named Kate from Below Deck on there. Shout out. Kate's my girl. Yep. She had a baby. Isn't she, uh, she like last minute or something? She she was by yeah I think uh, she's by yeah because she's by because um I think one of her I think her first season on Below Deck she had a girlfriend okay okay okay, okay so okay, okay. she was on the podcast uh she became a, a friend of mine and I had her on and she was on Bravo chat room with Portia because because in spite of what the title says when it says executive producer Kate created the show and in this episode what I'm gonna tell you is. She said people think that, and the episode is still up. I was actually kind of nervous because we're just talking and I'm hearing the things she's saying, but we're also just vibing. And I'll never forget my girlfriend texted me that morning and said, girl, I'm listening to this episode. 
and it's about to go viral. And it, it kind of did. Um, she summed up Portia by saying, people think that Portia is not smart, but when it came to reality TV brains, Portia stood in line twice. She could hit a school bus full of children and come out as the savior. So she talked about, there was a particular episode and they were talking about, it was either Black Lives Matter or something along the line. And you see Kate kind of like freeze up. And then there was a lot of conversation about Kate online because she was white and frozen. But she let it be known that they would rehearse before and they would each be given basically what they were going to be saying. But then when somebody takes, when the camera's on, what you're so, so if me and you were on a panel and you're supposed to say X, Y, and Z, but then the light comes on and I jump and take what you say first. Now you just out there. Yeah. So she said that when it comes to Portia, she knows exactly what she's doing and she's one of the most diabolical. And this is from somebody who worked with her. Kate created that show. I didn't know that she just said that. I uh -huh. honestly thought that was a Portia show. No, Kate created that show because she had a deal with Bravo. <laughs> Look at the thumbs up. Uh, Did you so see I the thumbs up? I thought it was Portia's show. Mm -hmm. Nope, it, it was Kate. I'm going to send you the episode. It was okay. it was things that you think you, like, I see this in a person, but when she said that she could hit a bus full of children and come out, that tells you the type of person. that. And and, and I, I'll never forget when I found you, I was like, oh, I want to, and you would be like, peach juice. I was like, oh, I want to send this episode. <laughs> but no, yeah. I I, I realized with Portia, it, uh, it finally kind of like all came together on Ultimate Girls Trip um, when she was in the confessional and one of the producers said something and Portia was like, yeah, just if, if all else fails, just play dumb. And I was like, exactly what Portia does in a lot of situations. Like whenever Portia is back is against the wall, she just acts like she doesn't know any better. And I think that some of the viewers love the kind of ditzy, oh, and I think that's how she gets away with, that's how she could get away with hitting some children on the school bus. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to Portia's defense and say, Portia just didn't know. Portia just, you know, you know, they think ditzy. And I don't think that Portia is the brightest crayon in the box. I don't. But I think that Portia knows enough to play up the dumb card. And that as and 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 that's the difference. It's like you may not be the brightest crayon over here, but if you know how to scheme and all of that, that's two different things. If you know how to scheme to get with so yeah, and I, Rodney, I was shocked when she, when she was saying this. And then when you as you start to think back, you're like, hmm. Because and it was around the time that she was getting with Simon, because she was basically like, I mean, I wish her luck. And she said she got what she wanted. So yeah, so. I, I I I am praying to transition back into Potomac and the reunion because y'all I could have Rodney here for um the, the next week, but uh, I am praying that Atlanta. I'm just gonna be honest. Gives me something to be proud of because Atlanta and Potomac there are only black. I'm gonna just say they are only black franchises, and I watch our black queens. Because they're black and they look like me, right? And you see shapes and sizes that look like me and they like to eat food and they're quick with it and they're this. Well, Atlanta and it's heyday. But then to see Potomac go down in such flames to me is so disappointing. So I don't know if I could take it if Atlanta doesn't come back serving. <laughs> Y'all should see Rodney's face. I just, everything you just said, I'm echoing. <laughs> <laughs> I go up for Atlanta. Me too. I went up for Potomac because it was a cast full of Black women. And I love Black women. I was like, the other girls on the other franchises can't compete with Atlanta. They ain't getting with the Potomac. I don't care. Now, they might have a little bit more money, but when it comes to reading and shading and being yes. quick the girls together, you're not going to outdo Atlanta and Potomac. <laughs> I just thought they were more entertaining. Yep. Yeah. Like you said, if Atlanta comes back, and I'm hoping that them taking this long break, they really are trying to give us a good old school Atlanta yes. season. 
because with Potomac, it's like, oh, what is going on? Like, I shouldn't be getting ready to watch with my stomach in knots. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again. It's going down in flames. And I just feel like, like, this is not the way Potomac was supposed to go. At all. It really, it really, it really hurts my feelings to see <laughs> the road that Potomac is going down. It really yes. does. Well, so let me ask you this. Have you noticed this? Because we talk about viewers and hypocrisy, right? And we know that, the, the as Candace said, the line will be moving for one versus the other. So when I think about Atlanta, the reading, the shady, the, the shadiness, Nene having lunch, one of, one of my favorite scenes, it was just a throwaway scene, but Nene having lunch with Candy when Nene was on her apology tour and saying, talking about Dennis and the rumor about pets and saying, I heard Portia had to check into PetSmart. And Marlo talking about Drew's body, um, Sheree calling her busted can of biscuits. It's interesting to me that there's no outrage with those comments. You talk about body shaming. You have Sheree, again, sitting in a confessional saying, Drew looks like a busted can of biscuits. You have Candace saying forehead, and now she tears down women. women. And I asked, I brought that up to somebody and they said to me, well, the difference is that Sheree is funny. And I said, well, that's your perception though. So to me, you can't, I feel like if I find Sheree funny coming after another woman's body, but I don't find Candace funny, it's not for me to go online and preach about tearing another woman down. I just don't think it's funny. But what's the difference? I just think that the people don't like Candace <laughs> because and I think that's one, been one of my arguments that is that all of the housewives do the exact same thing. <laughs> they all do the exact same thing. They go and talk about each other's husbands. They may even mention a kid every now and again. <laughs> Body shame, definitely. It's going to either be your stove pipe legs, you look can of busted biscuits. They're going to talk about your feet being big, your forehead, your body being wide. And I think that's one of the things that always irritates me is people pretend or like Candace is the only one that does it when they all do it. They and we'll say, um, some people were saying this, uh, I was on a, a panel the other night and somebody was saying, well, it's Candace's tone. Okay, so now it's her tone. <laughs> so now it's her tone. <laughs> But you have, you have, you have, you have, you have Karen sitting across a dinner table from Giselle saying you a hoe from Hampton University with a hot box. <laughs> right? <laughs> <You're aware? laughs> and I just, I think that's what frustrates me. And I, I would even want to go a step further and say the women on Atlanta their skin tones aren't so drastically different from each other. So Sheree's skin tone is not so drastically different than Drew. So when, so to me, and I'm going to just say, sometimes I feel like whether it's the black audience or the non uh, black audience, looking at a bunch of black women who are, they're not look at them, looking at them with different skin tones to them. They're just black. We're not trying to figure out what they are. So they're going after each other's bodies, husbands. It's a key key. They're caricatures of themselves. Then when we get to Potomac, when you have a black woman that is arguing with another black woman that maybe white viewers could kind of see themselves in because we don't know quite what she is. Now, all of a sudden, people are affronted and offended at that. And that's what I'm feeling. It was the same thing. <laughs> I think that you just said it. I mean, I don't even have to, you literally just said it with Atlanta. It may be because they're all similar in skin tone, but I also feel like it with Atlanta, they don't mind going. Candy will get Kenya together. Like That's true. Can, can, Candy will go, will get Portia together. If she got to get, you know, if Portia will go up, to, like they'll all go after each other. That's true. It'll eventually be dead and they'll come back around. With Potomac, it, mm. it seems as if with those women, y'all are doing the same thing, but you will hold Candace and Wendy to a, a different like level where you guys will eventually forgive each other and move on, but then you still have 
Candace and Wendy on an island by themselves. It's not like Atlanta where like they can get into it and eventually kind of move on and still be around mm-hmm. each other and deal with each other. And then when you start to look at the difference between the ladies on Potomac, I mean, <laughs> that's, I don't know if you if you had uh, seen this. And and again, I know uh, those of y'all that are listening will hear me mention it. And sometimes you will hear me mention things over again to new guests that come on the podcast. But I'll never forget there was an episode on um, Giselle and uh, Robin's podcast. Carlos King was the guest. And this was last year. And he said the reason he thought Potomac was successful and he started going into why. Robin then says she felt like after season one, they needed more brown women on the cast so they could resonate with the audience. So she basically made a call to production. So that means you knew what the perception was of the way all of y'all looked season one. If you felt strong in them. Yes, I'm I'm going to go back and find the episode and send it to you because I heard I listened a couple of times for myself. And then Giselle. So Robin says that, right? Giselle says the reason she thinks Potomac was successful was because the world had not seen light skinned, green eyed bandits, black women who were successful. Those were her words. So when people want to say, I don't know where this colorism conversation, even and it, she herself has now made her skin tone currency by saying that you think your show is successful because the world hadn't seen light skin, green eyed black women. And so I also want to compare, even when we talk about the whole colorism stuff to act as if first season was not about. Come on. They 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 literally went after Katie for saying like, and now all of a sudden, color is being reintroduced back into the show, and it's like, oh my god, when the first season was literally about color, <laughs> about co- not being black enough, or someone not wanting to say they're black, or <sighs> Rodney, when you bring that up, I think about it. That scene in my head when they were at what well, they were at a luncheon, and Giselle standing up saying, "Katie acts like she's afraid to be black." So, so we want to talk about blackness, but now when, and it's easy for you to do that when you're talking to other women that look like you, who, who you think may not have the history or the knowledge that you have because your father walked with Martin Luther King, because you were with, met Jamal Bryant at the NAACP, but then you meet women who have had different life experiences based on the hue of the, based on their hue. Now, all of a sudden we're confused. You saying that, cause she was a bit aggressive with Katie in that scene. Even when you fast forward to the reunion, Ashley even said to Giselle and Robin that they're the most, they're the ones who lean more towards um, your uh, European standards of beauty. That's what she said. Katie also said that Giselle was the one who could pass for white. And Giselle replied, I could, but I don't. So it's like, to act like these conversations around color have never happened on this show, it's like, that's how I know y'all came in season five, fight night. <laughs> so if y'all were here, season one, you already know it was discussed during the season. It was discussed during the reunion. Now, we, I have to be honest. When Candace, you know, said it to, 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 to Giselle, she said it from her gut. <laughs> she, you know, she's, you know, she made sure. But that was the whole point because I don't like her. Yeah. So I know that when I say this, it comes from the depths of my soul. I want everybody in the room to feel it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a little conversation they were having at the reunion season one, though. <laughs> Kenneth wanted to call it to her face. Girl, you're a white woman. Yeah. That's- <laughs> her feelings. That was the whole point. Because yeah. you- I don't think a thing. You hurt my feelings. You hurt my feelings. It may be childish, but you hurt my feelings. You talked about my husband. Now I want to hurt yours. So I'm gonna call you a woman, and I'm gonna say it. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it as angry as I can. Because <laughs> I want everyone in this room to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Boom. And I will say that's one of the things that I do. Basically, I don't know if admire is the word, but I appreciate about Candace is how. She is who she is, whether it's showing vulnerability, whether it's 
you sitting up here with your white looking self using your privilege. Like she has always been, this is like, this is how I feel. And I'll never forget when she was going back and forth with Giselle. And I saw people saying, you know, all of a sudden there's rules to fighting now. And I'm like, people, oh, in my hood, we do this. If I never hear talk ish get hit again, it, it will be too soon. Because to me, I always thought, well, if it's talk ish get hit, hit, and that's why Candace got popped, they talk ish to Candace and she hits back with her words. So what's the difference? I, I never, I, I said this the other night, um, like Candace says, the line is always moving. If people can understand that where you grew up from, how you were raised, or what you saw is that when people talk mess, they get popped. Then why can't you also understand that, for example, in Ashley and Candace's situation, when she threw the butter knife, you know, people swear it was a machete. Come on, and that she pulled it on her. <laughs> Ashley literally had, literally had to look and see where the butter knife landed. <laughs> understand that people talk mess and get popped, then why can't you also understand that if you go inside somebody's home and you disrespect them, you might get your ass whooped. So I don't understand how y'all can rationalize or make sense of talking mess will get you hit, but going inside somebody's house will possibly get you hit too. And then on top of that, like I've also stated, yes, Candace did throw the butter knife, but Ashley wasn't worried about that butter knife because she continued to come inside of that woman's home after Candace told her to leave. Now, at that point, Ashley really deserved to get her ass beat. Yeah. Because if I tell you to leave my house and you keep walking in and out. It's going to be, they're going to have to cut the commercial. It's trespassing and we're just going to be honest about it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to have to happen. <laughs> so yeah. I, never, I never understood how people could rationalize that you can get popped by talking mess, but going inside, going inside somebody's home, whether their mama paid for it or not. Thank you. I was going to thank you. That doesn't warrant you getting popped. Walking inside somebody's home after they told you to leave, that doesn't warrant getting popped. Like, I just... I don't, uh, and like you said, whether they paid for it or not. So if we had went to... So if Candace had went to Ashley's house and walked in and out, because Michael or her back it was paying for that. So let's be clear. <laughs> so it's... It, it, <laughs> say that again. In her mother's house. In her mother's house, right? Like, like Karen said, like you know, Ashley got kicked out and put in a sweat box with her clothes. Okay, driving back and forth. But I, 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 I never. I just it, it, it. I think sometimes, like you said, people go with the popular comment. I'll never forget. I, I was listening to a, a white man, like a, a, a middle. I'm middle aged, so I'm gonna say middle aged white man talking about Potomac season five. And he was like, yeah, Candace talk ish get hit. I said, now, you know, you have never said that in your whole life. You know, you've oh. never said that. <laughs> you just lied the line. You saw some people say that and you repeated it. <laughs> like, you sound dumb. Like, come on now. <laughs> so, and one thing, so g getting into see part one of the reunion, give me your overall thought and then there's just like certain things that stood out to you, but over what what you felt overall, how you felt after watching it, and then just certain things that stood out to you with this part one. Overall, I got Giselle is the queen. Yes. Um, Candace was put in her place. Wendy knows that Giselle is the queen of the show and there's nothing they can do about it. I got upset at Candace a few times because I felt like she could have been reading <laughs> Giselle and Robin through the roof. There's no way that Robin would have been able to say anything about my man in screenshot. I don't care if my man was out here in these streets. You're not going to talk about it. <laughs> it. might be somebody else on the stage that can talk about some screenshots. You're not going to talk about it. I'm rocking back and forth like Miss Seeley in the <laughs> For her not snatching Robin by her neck and swinging her every which way, but loose. <laughs> Ooh. Robin is the last person to be talking about anybody's husband with screenshots. Um, I felt mm -hmm. bad for Candace at the end. I felt like Candace was defeated when she had to apologize. Um, Did you notice when she was apologizing, she kind of took her hand? It was, uh, I was watching like her body language, and it was almost like it was 
on her stomach. And you know, like sometimes when you just gotta be like, when you have to do something that you don't want to do, I just felt like everything in her just kind of give up. So sorry, sorry to cut you up, but just saying that. I think that was the point where I felt like I saw her like, okay, um, uh, it's, it's, it is what it is. And I think it, it wasn't even Giselle laughing at the first, the beginning part of the reunion, because I did kind of find it funny. I'm not, I'm not even a fan of Giselle's. <laughs> I did kind of find that funny. It was when Candace was apologizing and oh. I was over and I saw Giselle laughing. I said, oh, this is what this is about. This is about trying to make her feel less than. Yeah. I'm putting your place. Yeah. The simple fact that Candace had to apologize and Giselle sat across from her and laughed while she was apologizing. And then Giselle didn't apologize. No. Even when you told her, you did say, he made me go into the room. <laughs> she came back and said, oh, well, if I said that I meant to say. And, and never... She never apologized. That was Giselle and everybody else in that room putting Candace back in her place. When I, I felt, that's when I really felt bad for Candace. I said, damn. That, <laughs> Rodney, when she uh, when she was apologizing, I was so glad she said, I don't take accountability for the death threats. Cause I'm like, Candace, if you're gonna apologize, like I need you to like come. I, I was I'm like, say something. Like, don't just let them win. And when Giselle did that whole and like flipped her neck. I said, oh, she thinks she's on the yard at an HBCU and she's the head AKA and the girls are bowing down. That's what it is. Even, even after Candace apologized, Ashley said something about, yeah, she's taking responsibility or something like that. I can't remember that. Yeah. And then Giselle said she needs to take responsibility. It was something along those lines. I was like, Ooh. I, I said, I, Oh, I immediately, and I know, and y'all know I just like to be transparent, like to be honest, because we all, listen, we could say, oh, we're grown. We don't fight back with our words. Yeah, we do. I said, I wanted Candace, you know, to say, Andy, listen, I get it. She's miserable, but I hope her, her being the HBIC on a sinking reality show and her hot box keep her warm at night. Like, because <laughs> I didn't, that's what people were saying to me. On my live, they said that they heard Giselle say that y'all said that y'all were going to talk to her. She did. She said it. She said, I was told she was going to be talked to. I did not hear that. Go back, Rodney, go back. When she said, what, what are you saying? When she said that, it was like, so you went and told on her. You went and contacted, which, so uh, when, which ties into when Giselle was laughing. You know, I saw people saying, oh, I'm disgusted. To me, I wasn't because I also felt like it was forced and Giselle was putting on because she was in that second seat. So, Because she's never had that much to say. But I will say, I saw people say Giselle is unbothered. The woman is bothered. She has now went to HR. When she said she told me she was going to be talked to, I was told she was going to be talked to, that let me know she went to somebody to tell on Candace. Ultimate girl's trip. She wanted them. She went and told producers to go and search her room. Andy, watch what happens live. BravoCon, not this year, this past year, but the past year before, Andy came on stage and made a joke about the set and Giselle's clothing. He said on his radio show, Giselle called him upset. So when we watched the replay on TV, that part was missing. The only way we got to see it was because somebody was recording and had posted it on Instagram. But when it came on TV, that part was gone. So you talk about she's unbothered. We heard about her alleged season five meltdown, but they didn't show it. And if you don't want to believe Monique, y'all can believe Wendy, because I don't think Wendy would have lied about that. So that woman is bothered. She is. She's bothered and she's the most sensitive. But I think because people think that, think that because she comes to the reunion and she's kind of stoic, she just sits mm -hmm. there. She's bothered. She is the one who can't move forward. Everybody else can move forward. Come on. <laughs> she's supposed to HR. She's bothered. She's definitely bothered. And she's sensitive. She's probably yeah. more, more sensitive than Candace. Candace can move forward. Yes. Yeah. To have a conversation. Wendy is willing to have a conversation. It's Giselle. <laughs> if Wendy could have a conversation with Mia for the sake of the show, 
because we all know we it's like why are you talking to her and and laughing and kikiing after what she did but i was watching your review and something you said stuck out mia got on that platform at bravocon you said and you brought back up she actually apologized to wendy again not the fake since she apologized to wendy again she took ownership of you know mia is a mess <laughs> that mia okay. is a but <laughs> we gotta get into Mia. But you know, I will give Mia that when she was at BravoCon, she did take ownership and said she shouldn't have put her hands on Wendy. It was the Green Eye Bandits who got booed. Come at on. <laughs> if we're gonna be honest about it. And you know also Robin was in the back, upset <laughs> and pissed because she felt like it wasn't fun. And she didn't basically understand why she was getting booed. Mm -hmm. Robin was on the scenes. Wasn't Pissed. she? Wasn't she almost in tears? Was she was on the stage? I saw them hand Robin a napkin. She was wiping her nose, mm -hmm. and in the back, it was it, like she pretty much had a meltdown in the back. Mm -hmm. But you can't understand how your coworker would feel the same way. That's what gets me um, for people who are so unbothered by the fans and the social media, but you're in DM groups because you ain't giving them your phone numbers. Um, you in DM groups with, can we just not say bloggers? Can we say YouTubers and probably Instagram accounts? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Can we tell the truth <laughs> and shame Hello. the devil? Shame the devil. Hello. Um, it, it's, cr it's, again, we go back to you, like who, you know, you resonate with who you resonate with. Cause at the end of the day, we don't know these people. And sometimes you do, you do, you may get to know them outside of a DM group chat, but you may get to know them. But the thing I, I find it ironic that the things that they're accusing Candace of are, they also participate in those things and for production for Andy to bring up death threats, and then they put up a a um, ex uh, from Twitter something that Candace liked that had nothing to do with death threats, but colorism. To me, that is whether you like Candace or not, that is sending a clear that that's sending a message of the narrative that production is trying to produce. For Candace to have to literally, like you said it on your live, and I didn't catch it. And then you said it. And I was like, oh, when you said Candace literally had to look at the producers like, am I crazy? If you go back and watch the scene over when Candace was even talking about the whole S.A. and, you know, Chris, and she was looking into the audience or the, the producer, whatever, you know, the, the mm -hmm. camera the camera crew, whatever. And she was like, am I crazy? Like, what? like am I crazy? It, was, it got to the point where eventually... Karen had to speak up. And then that's when you heard Andy say, um, even with the, not outside of the uh, the, the death threat uh, comment, Andy had to say, oh yeah, the producers are telling us that you did say what you said yourself, basically. Um, <laughs> you did say made. But even with the even with the text, I mean, even with the life, they showed a tweet that Candace liked about colorism. It had nothing to do with, so it was like you're purposely, it, to me, that's when it becomes dangerous because that is a serious topic of conversation, colorism. So now how we talked about sometimes these housewives do things that have consequences in everyday life. That mm -hmm. is one of the things because we have people watching that may not have heard about colorism. And we're not saying it's the housewife's job, but if this is supposed to be real life, we know these things go on. And again, you were based off of Jack and Jill. And come on, we know the history of Jack and Jill. So it, I, I was, when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, Candace did basically literally have to plead with production. Can you please back me up? Just like during the season when they kept showing flashbacks of Candace, but not of Giselle. Oh, call it out. And call then, it out. Let me ask you this. Okay, let's say me and you are good friends and I find out. Rodney to hit his whole man and everything going on with him. And in the meantime, you know, he was, was me and my husband's advocate. And now he's saying, can we all just agree? You know, we know what Robin said. I started thinking today, I was literally listening to your review 
And like I said, you be having me thinking. I'm like, yeah. And I, I have said, okay, Candace, at this point, I don't think what she said about Robin was detrimental, but I can see how Robin would be upset. I'll give you that. You be upset because that's supposed to be your friend. You get that. Candace, you either have to see her side or you have to move on. But I started thinking before all of that came out, for somebody that's supposed to be such a good friend, y'all went to dinner and you was willing to throw your friend under the bus for a live that she, what prompt, what did Candace do to you, Robin, to prompt you to pull out a speaker and play Candace's voice, which I saw that live and I put it on my page because Right after that, Candace was talking so good about Robin, her business, her skincare, and her hats. So here you are pulling out a speaker because you want the ladies to hear what Candace said about them. It was on her page. And how did she get it? Didn't Robin say a blogger sent her the information? So we know that you've been dealing with bloggers, <laughs> YouTubers for a minute. You know, the thing with Robin and Giselle, and I've said this, I want to say it again, Candace is the one who has, um, <laughs> I would say Candace isn't afraid to get on Twitter and use her own thumbs to send, her, send out her own messages. Robin, we're going to call her for what it is. She has other YouTubers and whoever, whomever else doing the dirty work for them. So at one point, you used to see Giselle engage. Remember when her yes. and Candace got the back and forth? Giselle used to engage on Twitter. Robin used to be on Twitter. Now they're not on Twitter. <laughs> not on Twitter. I believe that I believe that Robin and Giselle are on Twitter. They just are on burner accounts. I don't think they're on, I think they're on fake accounts. Mm -hmm. But I also definitely believe that with Robin and even Giselle, they have other people doing the dirty work for them. That's it. You also called out Robin's facial expressions when Candace had the receipts. You called it out. People, when y'all see this, go back and watch. Well, wait till after. Wait till after we finish talking. But after, <laughs> okay. Wait, don't stop right now. Wait, wait till we done. Go back and watch when Candace pulled out those boards. Look at Robin's face. Robin's face cracked. Rob, Candace gagged her. Mm -hmm. Robin got real nervous mm -hmm. because at this point. As much as y'all say that Candace is a disaster on Twitter, Robin, you just have other, you're, you're in contact with people who, like, is Are doing it for you. For you. I mean, again, because, and, and notice how, well, clearly we know it's true because Robin turned to Giselle and said, are you upset when Candace called out <laughs> that Robin was in a group chat? saying I should post this Sunday. And I tweeted and said, that is code for I'm gonna drop it here, hoping one of y'all pick it up. Because if you're unsure of what to tweet, you would ask your publicist that you pay if you have one. So for me, I'm like, how do y'all not see? It's almost work to me, that's worse than what y'all say Candace does. Because just like you pointed out, Candace has the balls to do it herself versus having other people say what she feels. She has always been that one. Always. I, 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 for Candace, I, I ain't never talked to Candace through no DMs. I met Candace in person one time at a concert and one time at, um, I went to Pride in Atlanta and she was hosting with Marlo. And anyways, I was waiting on my Uber. She was walking and it was a mess. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, quick story, quick story. The first time I met her, I was at DC Pride. This was probably about three, four years ago. I was waiting on my Uber and it was a party that her and Marlo were hosting. And I'm sitting there waiting and I see somebody walk in and I'm like, oh my God, there go Candace. My heart started beating fast. Because you know, I don't talk shit about this. <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't talk shit about Candace and Chris. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I got real nervous. <laughs> you know, it's one thing we see these people in person. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She had like five or six gay gay men with us. I'm like, girl, I'm gonna give me up. I can't find out by myself. And she looked and she was like, Robin? And I was like, hey. And then she walked up and gave me a hug. And her team was trying to hurry up and get her in because the party was about to be over like in an hour. Okay. She 
I think the party was like from five to ten. I think she came at nine o'clock. <laughs> She was about, you know, she was trying to hurry up and get in. Now, like, we have to go, we have to go. She was like, oh, my God, that's right in the voice. But I've met Candace that time and at a concert. But I've never been in contact with Candace. Candace has never been in contact with me. If you want to defend someone, if you like someone, just do it. But Robin, girl, <laughs> and the other YouTubers, girl, y'all are in chats together. <laughs> yeah, which means if you in chats, you're not getting a check because it ain't one-on-one. -on -one. So you doing all this and you're not getting paid for it? Girl, so you're willing to, I'm not saying that money is should be the motivator, but girl, yes. you're doing all yes. of this. At least yes. I can leave, I can at least wrap my head around it that you was getting a little check. That, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If this thing was sending you 5000 every month, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all out here doing dirty work for this woman for free. And, and then they turn around and talk about Candace. Candace do her own dirt from what I understand. <laughs> her own dirt and and i go back to and calling them your friends if you don't have her, their phone numbers you are not friends i'm sorry i ain't never called dr wendy my friend i ain't never called candace my friend those are not my friend. I, I will say in a heartbeat i don't know those ladies <laughs> i love them <laughs> right. I, not all those women. I ain't never met their kids i ain't never met their husbands I don't know. I just go by what I see. Mm -hmm. And it looks like I'm defending them. That's fine. Um, sometimes I am, but it's not because I'm in some secret group chat with them and I'm like plotting to go after the Green Eye Bandits. No! Like, that was so outrageous to me that people didn't get that upset when, again, I've never went, uh, I haven't uh, gone up for Monique uh, but a few times, but let's go back to her season when Robin found out that her brother was running the social media account and did a broke meme. Now, all of a sudden, but because it's not your brother that's doing it, Robin, but it's other content creators, it's the same thing. Literally the same thing. It's the same. And Monique tried to deny it by saying, oh, no, I'm not doing it. But your brother, is, <laughs> if your brother is running the account, more than likely it's going to lean into your favor. Girl, let's yeah. stop playing. Right. Then you got you come with Robin, like this is literally the same thing. It's the same thing, and now they think that they can hold one over Candace or held one over Candace. She's not on the show anymore by saying, "Oh, we're not on Twitter." And no. but y'all, you have the other, you have other people doing your work for you, so you, you don't have to be on Twitter. And just like I told the story with Brooke Ashley, is a YouTuber. Come on. Please tell it on here. Um, it was a story. Uh, we, I, we were at BravoCon in the VIP lounge. <laughs> Shout out to you. You know anything about the VIP lounge? You know, I was new to BravoCon. I didn't know what was going on. You told me about that. I'm like, VIP lounge? So anyway, we're in the VIP lounge. And do, the, do, the, do the ear when you say VIP lounge. Okay. We're in the VIP lounge, okay? You have to have special access to the VIP lounge. <laughs> <laughs> we know about the VIP lounge. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> we were in the VIP lounge. Long story short, Brooke Ashley is another YouTuber. Those lines to take pictures with the Bravo celebrities were long. Brooke Ashley said she was in line to take a picture with uh, Robert and Giselle. She got to the front of the line. Giselle did this, like basically hold up and told whoever it was, a producer, cameraman, I don't know, that basically they were done taking pictures. So again, if y'all think that the Green Eye Banders are not watching YouTube videos, if you think they're not in on Twitter reading comments, they are. They are. Come on. They are. They are. <laughs> they are. Because <laughs> <laughs> as, as, as soon as they saw Brooke Ashley's face, they said, well, now it wasn't Robin. She said it was Giselle. Yep. That absolutely not, no ma'am. Oh, ma Which and the different to me that says the difference it shows the difference in people because Mia, ooh, sometimes she just ugh. But Mia is aware of who Brooke Ashley is and knows that Brooke wears her out. And Mia was right there. Let me tell you, Brooke had no problem saying. Brooke said to Mia, Mia, I am so disappointed in you. I cannot believe all that that went on. And she said, I know I have apologized to Wendy. Da, da, da. They had a conversation, took a picture. To me. Even though me hashtag Mia be lying, that still shows you either either the type of person she is or she knows that for the good of the show for real. 
it's best to move forward. I will say I did hear that Mia was very nice at BravoCon. I heard people walking up to her and other YouTubers and she didn't have a problem. Mm-hmm. She would get, you know, I guess again, maybe she is putting what's best for the show. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just heard Mia was nice. Um, I heard what I heard about Giselle and Robin. Um, and I was like, girl, I would have been upset. I would but have been pissed. Lines are long. Yes, and even for the VIP in, in taking the yeah, pictures. The, VIP line, the, the, the lines in the VIP lines were long. And some of those girls had on heels. Yes. So he wait for the line. Brooke Ashley had on four or five inch heels. Yes, she did. Yes. <laughs> she was over about 45 minutes. You get to the front and then like, it's, and then the woman who probably watches your channel on the low says, stop. I, I like, honestly, I don't think that anybody is going to wait in a line. Come on. To take a picture with someone if they just hate their guts. I don't see any, but maybe, you know, I don't see Brooke Ashley wanting to take a picture with Giselle and Robin if she just hates them. Right. She wouldn't, right. No. So I think that maybe y'all may be a little bit too sensitive, <laughs> Giselle. When you talk about sensitivity, I go back to the tweet, Candace's tweet about the $900,000 teardown that people like to focus on, but not, they don't want to focus on what preceded that tweet, which was Robin and Giselle sitting in a confessional and Giselle saying, I seen Dorothy and she told me Candace wanted her to pay for the house. (laughs) That's exactly how they were laughing. And to me, you have to look at somebody's credibility. We have shown, we have been seen Giselle putting sauce on things, not accurately retelling a conversation. Also, because I'm a fan of content. So there was, I don't know if the podcast is still out, but there was a podcast out called Bravo's Daily Dish and an old RHOP producer. I don't know if he's still producing. Kamal Bell was on the podcast and they were asking him questions about the Potomac, Potomac ladies. And he said, Giselle will call and be like, have you heard such and such? And he'll be like, Giselle, that's not the story. That's wrong. And she'll be like, oh, okay, bye. And basically Giselle always constantly gets it wrong. So if I'm to believe what I've seen and what a producer has said, I'm not really apt to believe what you're saying, but let's just say it was true. Let's say Dorothy said that. Why did you feel the need to come into the after show, say that, and then think Candace wasn't going to respond? Let's be clear. It was a $900,000 teardown. Somebody took, I'm sorry, somebody took a picture of the add-on part and said it looked like a strap on. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just thought about the picture. That's it. That's it. But, so we forget, so we, so, talking about Giselle's sensitivity. So then what happens? The very next season starts and they were at a party and Giselle didn't want to speak to Candace because her feelings were hurt. And then Candace has to go meet Giselle in a coffee shop. So Giselle can say, my feelings were hurt because of your tweet, but never address what made Candace react that way. It's the same way with Wendy and and Giselle. Come on. Let's just call it a thing. Giselle, you wanted to bring onto the show, I guess, the storyline about Eddie and the uh, liking pictures. I don't know. I forgot the thing. And then Ashley. Yeah, about him, the pictures, yeah. And then, can't, then Wendy curses you out. And then Wendy's ready to move on. She goes to the party the next season. She tries to speak to you. And you're like, oh, get off of me. <laughs> like, you're the most sensitive one. You talked about this lady's family. She didn't talk about yours. And now they shouldn't have cussed you out. <laughs> Now you're upset, and now you feel like you're the victim when you really were the one who got it started. You got the party started. And it always goes back to Giselle bringing up her kids. Wendy has children, too, whose classmates, parents may watch this show and hear about this show and talk about it. So it's okay for you to talk about her husband and what you're hearing in the streets more than once because we saw that she had the conversation more than once and then Ashley finally picked up the baton her and her breast milk to deliver the story that's what happened I just I I, I, I was so disappointed oh, I was just so disappointed I, um, and I will say Karen reminded me of us being at BravoCon and Karen <laughs> eating Robin up more than 36 30- Karen was tearing Robin Dixon up on that stage. Karen hadn't even crossed her legs good enough. <laughs> that is I said, oh my God. <laughs> oh. 
Like, what did Robin do backstage? <laughs> like, girl, all they said was, here's a cast of Potomac. And all Robin, all Karen had to do was cross her legs and put that microphone to her mouth. And it was, it was on and popping. I said, oh, my goodness. One thing I, I, I did appreciate about Candace, Mia, uh, Wendy, and Karen was, you're at BravoCon. Perform. And I appreciated the fact that they could get on stage and give us some personality. Whereas, and not even to be funny, but like every time Candace spoke, you could see Giselle making faces. You could see them wanting to play. Like she was, they had the, um, these cups on the stage or whatever. And she's picking up, you know, the cup, looking at the cup. And it was like, come on. Like you are here. The fans are here. Because from what I understand, they're told to basically kind of give a performance. Like, you know, you're at BravoCon, the people want to see y'all put on a show. So that, again, just to echo you, I I did appreciate that even Candace, um, uh, not Giselle, Karen, they came ready to kind of give a show to the fans. Because you've had these people come here and fly here, and some of these people are spending thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And... <laughs> You got, you know, I not to go backwards, but that's when I saw Potomac's panel compare in comparison to Atlanta's. I was gonna bring that up. I said, oh, because uh, I didn't have an issue with Atlanta's panel until I saw Potomac's panel. Same, and that's when I said I was so against. Do not completely reboot Atlanta. No, I was saying no the whole time on the podcast. No. When I saw the Atlanta panel and then saw Potomac, I said, do what you need to do. Because, again, when Atlanta came on, the, uh, the when they did their panel, I was in the audience. And I'm like, okay, here go Atlanta. You know, these are my girls. So I was excited. And even after the panel, I was like, that was cute. And I was okay with it. I was, and I, but I think also because I love Atlanta. You Me know too. Like, it's my, Atlanta has my heart. I just, I'm like, it was cute. I was happy. And then when I saw Potomac's panel, I was like, oh, I see why some of the people online were saying that it was a mess. Yes. And I was like, okay, Atlanta, baby, y'all need to go on a break. Because with Atlanta, it did appear as though can't every girl up there, all of them, it just appeared as though they just came just to do their job. Like, I'm going to go in here and answer some questions. I, I felt like Kenya was trying to be a showman. He was. You know, Kenya is a beauty queen, so she's going to try to give you a show, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like Kenya tried, but even with her trying, it still wasn't enough to carry the group over the finish line. Yeah. Um, I just felt like these women are just on stage just to answer some questions. That <laughs> is a question and answer. That was it. That was it. But then when I saw Potomac, I was like, oh, <laughs> the girls are putting on the show. Because <laughs> that and was that my first panel. Y'all yeah. need to go back and regroup, reboot, recap, whatever. Because that was a Wait a minute. I like that. They need to regroup, reboot, recast. <laughs> oh, we're going to start saying that. Re <laughs> recast, yes. I'm going to say in the words of Rodney, the voice, you need to go back. Regroup, reboot, recast. Yes. Even Mia was like, I felt like all the girls, you know, you had when, I mean, you had Giselle and Robin kind of like rolling their eyes and. Just I, I don't I don't want to sound like I'm just riding Giselle. That's right, but 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 Giselle's even attitude at Bravo because she just sat there. Yes. Thank. <laughs> like, it just what it's like. Ugh, like you can't even fake it for the people. Fake it for thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was that that was disappointing to me because though. It, Conjure up the Giselle of when her and Karen were on the sidewalk and the mime is there and Karen says, you're a clown. And she's like, there's the clown over there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that, like you couldn't even, this is your job. But to me, that also goes to show when a network has let you know pretty much that you are the HBIC in how charge. Do, how do you think, okay, how do you think, why do you think that ha like how did Giselle get that much power? Because Giselle, as much as I don't too much care for Giselle Bryant, I have to also acknowledge that yeah. she's funny. But don't.